All right, so I sketched out a rose here, and I know what direction I want to take you guys to because uh, the next few ones are going to be uh, something a little different that I kind of do is print these out, and then I'm going to be taking the printout itself and uh, penciling it. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm concepting this rose into the scene, but I want to make sure it flows nice with the rest of it. Instead of two static articles, I want two very, very flowing articles. And this is just me going in and doing a whole bunch of things that I do is flip horizontal, try to work it into the design. I, I put a stem out there instead of the vine. I might still use the vine to uh, bring it all together, but for right now, you know, I just I find it really cool to be able to flip horizontal, flip vertical, flip whatever and then skew, warp, transform, and all this other these little tricks to get the elements working together. Something you can't do with traditional art. Okay, I'm starting to like this concept right here where it's sitting off in front of the heart on this side. And that feels very balanced to me. Okay, so what I'll do is make this part of this group and then go into this group, find out what element that threw it down at because once you throw it into this group, you're at the mercy of where it places it. And then I'll take and make a uh, layer mask on it and then start thinking, well, the rose is in front of everything. So that means elements that are in the background I don't want to worry about that right there. That's the sword. This is the heart. So really, this one's kind of useless. The sword. I add a little bit of a little bit of black onto that. And then the heart. Yeah, that's really nice. I like that. Okay, if I wanted to move like the whole sword around, which I kind of do, I want to move this entire sword around, and I got these elements that are added into it. See, I got these elements right here, and then I have the sword here. Those are kind of group groups. So I can layer group layers within a group. And then I can move those around. And this is the advantage of using groups and layer masks. Because if I like this more, if I like this angle a little bit more on it, I can go back into my layer mask and say, well, you know, now I moved it. I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to uh, paint white in this area. And suddenly my line appears. And then X on the keyboard's black, so I can switch between black and white. Okay, white.
There's my group. So there we go. That's some little tricks here and there to really come up with a cool concept. Of course, you know, I'm going to end up pr I'm going to end up printing this and I'm going to end up tracing it by hand. But at least the concept is there now and I was able to use all the computer to kind of move and manipulate the image around. I would still I would still do the traditional route of taking this in uh, drawing it by hand and then what I'll do is probably bring it back into the computer just to do the line work and see if I can get some different line work out so that's where I'm at right now I'm going to end up take taking this 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 out of the equation and this whole design I'm just gonna print it off using a goal file print and you're gonna find that it's huge. It's absolutely freaking huge, right? But if you scale to fit media, you're gonna find that it comes to the part where it's eight by eight. And if you want it six by six, you can just go in here and type in six by six. And then I can scale it to whatever need I for the individual. Because you're gonna find that they might want this on their back, they might want it on their neck, their they might want it on their pinky and uh, it's just all has to be scalable all right so that's what i'm going to do now i'm going to print this out at a, at a good size so i'm going to print it out probably about this size right here because it's always going to be a square anyway and then i'm going to take a pencil and start really going in here and addressing some of the line thickness this is something that i can't show on the video I don't have a camcorder or anything, but uh, I'll bring it back and then scan it back in and show you what I have. I usually I usually use Cougar 100 pound press for every all my drawings. It's a very smooth tooth uh, type of paper, and it really holds up well later on down the road when I want to reaccess it. It's you could practically do anything you want to that paper. It's just so thick and rugged. It's for cover okay so cougar 100 pound cover is like smooth awesome to blend the most amazing paper that you'll ever draw on all right so on to the next video